Okay, now we come to the topic of projectile motion. So um, now that I've learned that F equals MA, right? Actually, projectile motion is a very simple application of that. We don't even need impulse or work energy theorem. It, um, it's just direct application because uh, we're given the forces right, as a function of time. In fact, they are constant with functions of time. So if I have a projectile all right, um, and it's in a gravitational field, right, it's not in outer space, it's on the Earth, then the only force that acts on it is the gravitational force. Account, let, let's say we don't account for drag. Right, because they'll make things very complicated. Right? So um, if we account for drag, we actually need to solve a differential equation, which is possible. And uh, I've done it before. So we'll, we'll, we can go through this another time when I talk about more advanced projectile motion. But for now, let's keep it simple. So the only force we have acting on it is the gravitational force, uh, F gravity, equals to minus mg. And assuming um, we choose upward to be positive, right? If we choose upward to be positive, then the gravitational force has a negative uh, mg, right? It's negative because it's pointing downwards. So if we plug that into the equations f equals ma, remembering that f equals ma is a vector equation, so it's, tr it's actually three, com it's actually kind of three equations, and each one of these is like that. So we see, we compare it piece component-wise, right? So the second derivative of x multiplied by m is 0, right? So if we integrate it, if we integrate 0 twice, we get two integration constants. We get x is a linear function of time if integrate 0 twice, right? And these constants of integration, they come from, um, they come from the initial conditions on x and v. So c will turn out to be the initial velocity in the x direction, and d will turn out to be Okay, capital D will turn out to be the initial position, the initial x position, right? And likewise for z, right? Z same thing, second derivative zero. So we integrate twice, integrate zero twice gives us two constant integration, which is the initial velocity, which corresponds to the initial velocity in the z direction, as well as the initial z location of the particle. But for so that's for x and z. For y, there's actually a minus mg over here. So instead of just being linear with respect to time, y as a function of time is actually quadratic, right? Where the coefficient of the quadratic term, quadratic t squared here, is minus half g. And likewise, there's also initial y component of velocity and initial y component of position. So for most of um for most of projectile motion, usually we are start usually we we start off either at the origin, the origin, or we start off at some height h. So it's either 0, 0, 0 for the origin, or 0, h, 0, where h is some height, initial height that we start at. right? So in the case where it's 0, 0, 0, then substituting this into the, substituting the initial conditions, right, 59 and 60, 60 is for the velocity, into 58, we get the usual equations of motion, 61 to 63. So usually we also rewrite um, velocity instead of using ux and uy, usually we write it as a u cosine theta and u sine theta where theta represents the angle that we throw the ball at. And um, the reason why we want to do this is because later on we can, op we can maximize the range by varying the angle. So, so yeah, and um, on top of that, u is the u is the magnitude of the velocity over here. So u is equals to square root of ux squared plus uy squared is the length of the vector. Right? Remember that velocity is a vector. Okay, so substituting these two inside, we get this. So you may be more familiar with this. Perhaps you have derived this in your class, um, your school or something. And you usually derive it by in terms of acceleration, right? Usually you say acceleration is minus g downwards and whatnot. But um, in this case, I I've decided to be a bit more, uh, be a bit more pedantic and start from F equals m a because I want to emphasize that everything right, um, in physics, it comes from dynamics right. Dynamics is about forces, and forces tell your particles how to accelerate. Only after you know the acceleration, then you apply kinematics to obtain the following. Okay, so yeah, that's what's emphasizing. 
um, the dynamics aspect of it a bit more. Even the first few steps you may feel is a bit redundant. Okay, so now we're given um, we're given x as a function of time and y as a function of time, right? These are known as parametric curves. Uh, specifically, x is a parameter. Uh, sorry, t is a parameter. Time is a parameter of this curve. So in the next video, I'll talk about. I'll emphasize more on what this parametrization means and specifically how we can re-parameterize the curve using x instead and why we might want to do this. Okay, so that's all for this video. Let's see you in the next video.